What is up, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the MRNA Podcast. Here live with Staplegund. What's going on, man? Not much, man. What's going on with you? Not much. Just uh, recently getting back into Halo again with you and other members of the DNA community. And that has been a lot of fun, bringing back a lot of things that we used to do so many years ago now. We were talking about that recently. Uh, when yeah. you and I used to stay up super late, uh, that was 14 years ago, if you want to put Crazy. put a date on that. Um, <laughs> but something that was even longer ago than that was, let's see, what year to be exact, um, 2004. So what is that, 17 years ago? Yep. So to give an intro to what we're doing here for the Music Review Nerd Argument podcast... We're talking about Modest Mouse and their latest album, The Golden Cask. And the reason I say 17 years ago, because that was the last time I listened to this band. Wow. Yeah, because that was around the time Float On came out as a single. I think most people would recognize that song if they had heard it. Assuming. You obviously know the song, Assuming. Yes. Yes. Is that the last time you listened to them? No. So I listened to them, I would say, like, 2007 was the last time when they had uh, We Were Dead Before the Ship Even Sank. I still was into them then, um, enjoyed that album, and then they didn't release another album for eight years, and that one was kind of a dud for me. So kind of lost interest for a while, and then saw they were coming back, and thought it would be a good time to revisit yeah, because the last one before this one was 2015-ish? Yes. So it's it's another band with an absence in albums. And yes. possibly pushed back because of the pandemic. I don't, I don't know for certain. I'm going to assume so. I didn't read anything on that specifically, but I fully assume that that was the case for this one. Um, so for me, that's really... I know we like to talk about our history of the band. That's the extent of it for me. I know Float On. I know random other songs that I heard on the radio, I never dove deep into this band. So when you brought this up as a review, I was, I mean, not going to lie, hesitant because I'm like, I don't know what I'm getting into. I don't, because I know it's only a review of the album. It's not a review of the band, but I just have no clue what to expect and make comparisons on. And that's been such a strong point for me in our reviews to be able to make comparisons to mm-hmm. prior work to see where they're at as far as yes they're back yes they're not you know not or kind of a thing we can't gauge that or at least I can't you know I couldn't sure. so but I'll let you uh, do your history with it because I, I I know you do your homework and you have much more information on this particular band than I do so yeah I mean for me it was I mean what how kind of everyone or most of their fans started with Float On um, Float On was their big track that you know kind of got them running got them on the radio got them on you know the time probably you know mtv and all that where 2004 they were kind of still relevant you know as far as that um but then it was obviously all over the radio 
Um, so for me, I I love that song, and I ended up buying the album because of that, and totally hated the album. Oh no! Um, <laughs> yeah. So for me, I, I was just like, it was just too bizarre for me at the time. Okay. And yeah, I mean, the lead singer, he's got a voice where either you love him or you hate him, or you know, and it, he can be very polarizing. So for me. I enjoyed it and flowed on because it was catchy, it was poppy, it was, you know, good hooks, great lyrics. Um, and then listening to the album, it was just kind of a miss. Few, but a few years later, went back and revisited it, and now it's one of my favorite albums. Um, so, yeah, for me, that's, uh, you know, I guess at the time I wasn't ready for it. I was still into mostly pop punk, so with this kind of indie punk kind of feel to it, it wasn't really for me at the time but now i've you know gone on to really appreciate that album a lot more so that would be my uh my history with them um as far as their discography goes they started off in uh, 1996 um with this is a long drive for someone with nothing to think about great catchy album title um and uh they had the song dramamine and edit the sad parts along with others there because they're an indie band there's so many you know quote unquote singles that you can list that people would think were their best hits from that album so me even mentioning two or three songs people are gonna be like well why didn't you say this one why didn't you say this one <laughs> um but uh so then 1997 year later um they have the lonesome crowded west um they have uh from that they have teeth like god's shoe shine cowboy dan um that one is one of their all-time best albums according to their fans and according to you know a lot of uh like magazines publications and things like that it's very highly regarded um as well as 2000 they came out with the um the moon in art and antarctica um songs from that uh, are third planet gravity rides everything as well as many others and that's another one that you know scored really well with critics and uh people really loved it and uh, in 2004, as obviously when they got on big on the radio with Float On, um, good news for people who love bad news. And um, so their first two albums with, were with Up, um, the record label Up, and then the uh, Moon in Antarctica and good news for people who love bad news were with Epic. And so from that, they had Float On, they had Ocean Breeze Salty. Um, they had some other hits, the world at large, um, that people might be, uh, more familiar with as well. And, uh, 2007, so three years later, they had, we were dead before the ship even sank. Um, uh, from that they have dashboard, missed the boat. Um, those were kind of the hits from that album. And then again, they went on an eight year gap there, um, from 2007 to 2015. Um, they did a deal with Columbia, um, album called uh, Strangers to Ourselves and songs from that would be Lampshades on Fire um, The Ground Walks with Time in a Box those never really hit the radio or really got very popular and a lot of people were just kind of in general let down by that album but because they're an indie band there are people who go you know that's my favorite album Yeah, you just really don't they're kind of all over the place so that's uh, their history and now for 2021, now that they've released The Golden Casket, they're back with Epic. Probably because the Columbia deal didn't work out too well, I would imagine, with their 2015 album, and now it's been six years. As I say, then. six years absence. Yeah, what kind of contract was that? Did you have expectations right. with a single that you didn't meet? Did you have multi-album deals? Uh, you know, It's hard to say a lot of the bands have those requirements, and if they don't fulfill it, then you know they, they exit them because then they're a, a profit loss for them. Uh, I want to shout out everybody in chat with us tonight. Again, welcome to the podcast. You can join us live when we do these. If you're listening back when it's not live, we do these on Tuesdays on twitch.tv slash dosenerdacuments. So give us a follow there. Uh, but shout out, to, shout out to Lana. Batman's here. Bullet here. Uh, he says, hi, Carnival Screams in the building. Trevor's here. Um, who did I miss? So Lana, Batman, Bullet, Trevor. And uh, yes, the... Card for tomorrow for those seeking that is posted in the go live post for today's show. Tomorrow is NAW Pride. We're celebrating the end of Pride Month with our own Pride show. So join us for that tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for those listening live. Uh, but yes, continuing on with Modest Mouse. 
uh, being their seventh album now in 25 years, that's a lot, but yet not a lot. And it's yeah. because of those gaps, you know, the six year gap, eight year gap. When a lot of bands, every two, three years is a new album. Sometimes less time than that, depending on how large the, the album is uh, as far as track size. Uh, the one thing I do want to say before we dive into this one, this is what I felt a full album, finally, that we're reviewing. So it was more 100%. than 30 minutes. It was almost an hour long. Yeah. So that's a positive here. So for those that want to give this a listen, you can find this on YouTube for free. They have it on their channel. They have like the little videos um, sometimes with you can lyrics. find, I was going to say, sometimes you can find the lyrics, which is helpful, yep. helpful for us when we try to do part of our review, breaking down the lyrical content. Uh, but if you have Spotify as well, you can check it out. It is available on Spotify as well as other music outlets. You could buy and support the band. We are not sponsored. We'd love to be. Hey, Modest Mouse. Uh, but we are not sponsored or affiliated. We're just letting you know where you can find this stuff and where we found the stuff for this. Um, so yeah, one of the things we do is predict each other's scores before we actually start to dive into the album, and then we give a little bit background on the album itself. Do you want to predict scores? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to say this is tough for me, because if the last time you listened to them was Float On, I mean, <laughs> I really don't know what to expect, because this is, again, one of those bands that if you're not super familiar with, I can see you scoring really low, because it's bizarre sounding but i could also see you kind of scoring it high if you like the lyrical content or because it's a different sound so i, I honestly don't know so uh i'm just gonna go out on a limb just because it is such a bizarre sounding band that you might be unfamiliar with and can take a few listens to appreciate i'm gonna say a six for you fair i'm gonna go with yours in Contrast because of your familiarity and because I know what style of music you generally enjoy. I want to say seven, but I'm gonna pick eight. I'm just I'm leaning heavily on an eight for you. Um, okay. And then we'll find out at the end of the show on the Welcome. accuracies. Welcome. Thank you, Ty, for the host. Welcome, Ty. Glad to have you. I love that alert. You remember AOL? AOL Instant Messenger. Yeah, that was said, great. It said welcome. I love that. It makes me happy. Throwbacks. Talking about throwbacks. Right there, that was a long time ago. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Thank you, Batman. Thank you for the host, guys. Get those strands. Ty says, even I remember AOL. That's amazing. Um, so, yes, Golden Casket is the seventh studio album by the... They, they identify them on Wiki as an American alternative rock band. Uh, definitely indie. So, I would even say with this album, borderline psychedelic. For sure, with this album, yeah. And I, like I said, I don't know how that compares to anything else. So I'm strictly, we're reviewing this album. We're not reviewing the band. I can't preface that enough. So don't let me make this seem like this is my opinion on Modest Mouse over my actual opinions on the album. Um, would you like the honor of going first or shall I kick this one off? Uh, you can go ahead. All right. So in total, there are 12 tracks on the album. It totals... 50 minutes, 22 seconds. So the first track, I apologize, young listeners, earmuffs, Fuck Your Acid Trip, comes in at 3 minutes and 11 seconds. <sighs> I give a sigh because I had no clue what to expect. I gave a sigh <laughs> when I hit play on this thing. Um, out of total apprehension, just because I know, for me, if you know, you know me, but, but listeners... This is out of my comfort zone as far as yeah, music. I took a it. big risk with this one, but I, I enjoyed that. Like, I was very excited because I can't say I would have listened to this album if we had not done this show today. That's not a slight at them. It's just the, the simple fact it's been since 2004 and then years after that with that single. But again, let me continue. Very indie rock track with bass and guitar groove driving this one. Had a rough vocal style that builds into a more like singy sound towards the chorus. It reminded me of early 2000s with kind of like a Queen and Son of the Stone Age and other acts mm -hmm. from that time in that genre. Uh, for me, lyrically, it was about growing older and not engaging in acts you once did and then maybe you want to move on. Uh, overall, I felt it was a decent intro track to the album. 
but I can't say it's one that I play, you know, over and over. Uh, and I spoke, I speak on this in all our reviews. I don't know if this is when I'd throw in a playlist kind of thing. Hmm. So it, it's fine. It's a good opener. It really sets up the tone for the album. Yeah. And it, and it, it kind of opened my eyes and ears uh, to what I was about to experience for the next hour. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that was the the first track and my thoughts on it. All right, yeah, I mean, you classifying them as a psychedelic rock for this album, and their first song is called "Fuck Your Acid Trip." I mean, fitting. I, I think that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, yeah, for me, I mean, it's, it's kind of a trippy sound, bouncing kind of from left to right. If you had headphones going with this one, it, it was kind of cool to hear it going all over the place, um, which. Uh, I've never done drugs like this before, so I can't really say that, you know, this is what an ass trip would feel like, but I imagine, you know, if you're to put some music to that, this would be pretty similar. Um, so it definitely keeps kind of with their previous styles, but like kind of introducing some newer elements into their songs. Um, sounds, starts out with a singer frustrated with someone having an acid trip and they just want to leave, slowly turns into them experiencing what their friends are experiencing. Um... And so for that, you know, just as far as the lyrical content, you know, I enjoyed it. Um, I thought it was just kind of different for them because they've talked about drugs and things before in their music. And this one is just kind of also using those drugs as a reference point. To, you know, we've all been in that situation where we're in a conversation that we're stuck in. We just don't care. We just want to go and you're stuck and then you just kind of have to deal with it. Um, so, yeah, just kind of a kind of what you're saying, good, smooth baseline throughout the sound um throughout the song but I, I, this one i really enjoyed as far as uh starting off the album thought it was a good setup for the rest like you said so trevor mentioned something here's an idea for a christmas episode apparently uh, he says sounds like a stream all of dna gets together and drops acid i mean we got oh, together yeah. and ate hot wings and, and and that stuff you know why not just take it to the next level and just drip acid <laughs> I don't think we could do that legally, so uh, I'm going to shy away on that one. That's a nod to one of our other reviews. Don't you shy away. Shameless self-plug. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, it, it, interesting intro. Like, obviously, I, I'm thinking, this is almost like a game now for what we're doing here. Because I'm thinking, and this sounds weird, but it's not meant to be, um... I'm thinking about you, Justin, <laughs> but I am. I'm thinking about you when I, I listen, you know, to this stuff uh, more so because I know what you're into and what you're not into. And like, it, it's become a game to try to predict what you think as a whole. And then not to kind of stump you on mine, because it's not that kind of game. I, I can't surrender my or fake my emotions in this regard. I like it or I don't or somewhere in the middle. Um but it, it, it's what comes to mind when I'm like, I bet you he likes this song. I bet you he likes this part. You know, this mm. would be an interesting talking point. It, these are the thoughts that pop into my head as I'm, I'm listening to these these albums that we do. So, um, But anyways, let's, let's, I'll have you continue with our second song. All right. Um, second song is We Are Between. And uh, for this song, they've actually released a music video for it, and um, it's considered one of their singles from their album. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for me, it's got a, a catchy chorus, kind of simple lyrics, more of kind of a reflective song. Um, you know, it says, we are between living on Earth, made up of stardust, kind of stuck in our own thoughts and frustrations. Um, just kind of trying to figure out a way of being in between those things. Um, for me, this one was, this song was kind of a letdown. It, I know it is their um, radio single, I guess, their album single, and they made a music video for it. Yep. And lyrically, it's fine. I feel like it's pretty relatable, and people kind of are in between a lot of things right now, mentally. And a lot of people can relate to this song. And um, But for me, as far as musically, um, there just wasn't a whole lot of, a lot of variation from the chorus. Um, it was just a lot of repeats of the chorus. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's it's an okay song, but uh, for me, I, I like the way the album started off a little better just because it was such a different sound. And then this one is kind of just settling with a catchy chorus. Did you see the music video, by the way? Yes. 
But what a weird video. The the scene with the child and behind him in the car just kicking and punching like even I know it's a music video but maintaining his composure like they're a weird band. <laughs> yeah. You haven't caught on to that. <laughs> I'm catching on and I caught on after listening to this album. But uh <laughs> listeners, when you have a chance, look up the music video We Are Between by Modest Mouse. Check out what I'm talking about. And I want you to check for one thing. That was the lead singer, right? He was the in main parts, but yeah. Yep. Oh, he was the, the driver getting kicked by the kid in the back seat, right? That was him and then Yes. So listeners, uh, look up this music video because Unless it's just me, but I think the singer looks like a member of our community somewhat, uh, DKA, who is a member of our NAW community. Um, it's uncanny resemblance, but again, it might be just me. I'm, I'm weird sometimes making, uh, finding similarities in people. But yeah, look up We Are Between Modest Mouse music video when you have a chance, and tell me I'm crazy or tell me I'm right. So again, We Are Between Modest Mouse, it's the music video. And you'll know the lead singer. And I'm telling you, he looks like DK. Uh, it's, unless it's just me, I'm crazy, which is quite possible. Uh, but yes, yeah, a nice groove setting the upbeat style of the track. I say this lightly or loosely because I describe it as definitely a modest mouse feel because of what I know of them, which is very little. If you were to say, you know, or describe modest mouse, I would say this track, right? From what I know. So that, that's yeah. why I describe it that way. But also, there were hints of Anne Berlin on vocals in this one. I don't know why, but I kept hearing Anne Berlin, which is a band I really like. Keep that in mind. Yeah. So that was that was nice to hear. I, I, there, there's that vocal range or kind of a little yeah. bit more energy or aggression. And yeah. we've talked about that before as far as uh, what we listen for in vocalists. Because uh, sometimes our opinions on that are very contrasting, and w- yeah. we, we we seek out, and that's that's when something what we either adore or hate when we've recommended acts to each other. It always have come down to the vocalist, not necessarily the music. Um, yeah, their so testosterone, maybe. It, it could be, you know. I I don't know. I, I it's metal. I like I like anger. <laughs> oh, sorry. I meant like testosterone boys, and you know. I, I, is that a panic reference? And Harlequin Girls. Is that a, that's an old Panic reference, right? <laughs> that's that's a way yeah. throwback. Yeah, that's the first. That's album. when uh, when they were intolerable for me. I love but that album. His vocals have improved big time. He's more confident yeah. as a singer. We're not here reviewing Panic, but we should sometime. Sure, we should do their discography. <laughs> Just do a giant episode. That'd be fun. Anyways, but yes, yeah, so a lot of little hints of Anne Berlin on vocals. Uh, For this song, it had continued indie rock feels with similarities also to Cold War Kids, if you're familiar with them. I felt a lot of influence of them on this track, or just indie genre in general. Like, if you're not fluent or really familiar with indie, like, if you were to name some indie bands that kind of, like, are the, uh, I guess, forefront of the indie, like, if you were to describe indie, this is what indie is. Uh, Cold War Kids is a great example on how to exemplify indie rock yeah. um so that's why also i get kind that. of post-punk yes yes which i'll get to there's another track that felt very post-punk later in this yeah um ty says real quick yes i just looked and that guy sort of does look like dk thank you i thought i was crazy but maybe not uh check out tom cruise and he looks just tom cruise looks like batman in chat i don't know about that one but i'll take your word on it uh lyrically the song made me think about mental health uh, worthy, I, and in, in contrast to what you said, I said worthy of the single from this album. But in agreement to what you said, I'm not certain this is the summer hit for Casuals. While yeah. it's a good single for this album and for them, again, I don't think this is the summer hit they were looking for like Float On was so many years ago. All right. And that's a disappointment if this is your lead single off the album because they've released I think two or three so far yes and I believe this is the first one so problematic if I was a label I'd be concerned but then again maybe not because if you're an indie music fan maybe this is your jam and what you're into but for a pop consumer this isn't chart topping it could be but I don't think it is no I agree so 
Shall I continue on or back to you? Go ahead. Uh, track three. We're lucky. We're lucky to be doing this podcast together. Thank you, Stable Gun. I'm I'm lucky to have um listeners. I'm lucky to have you guys too. So we're all lucky. Uh, but we're lucky that this song was two minutes and forty four seconds because weird vocal intro. What is happening? Uh, very hippie. The song slowly builds with a repeating verse, eventually building to horns and a full band sound. Uh, it continues to grow, grow until it just drops off at the end, closing, uh, closes with bass and vocals with a synth in the background. Um, I just I couldn't get a feel for the song or a flow with it. And lyrically, what I understood was a song about figuring out our own thoughts and feelings and understanding that we just never really figured out. And to me, it felt more like an interlude than a song. Like, it was fine and existed, but it felt like an interlude. It didn't feel like an actual song. It didn't have the traditional structure that you would think. While it is a song, it just didn't have that standard feel to it. And it's fine. You don't have to have... There are no rules with music. Keep that in mind. Um, Nor do I hold that against them. But just for me, it just... It didn't feel structurally like what I've looked for in a song. It's just very interlude feeling to it. All right. Yeah, for me, I mean, like you said, it starts off kind of just with vocals and some organs playing in the background. You know, it's very uh, slow start, kind of a whispery echo going on with the vocals, and it kind of slowly builds up, adds in guitars at about 45 seconds, and then towards the end of the song gets in that repetitive trumpet line, which I really liked. I thought that was really good, and they've used a lot of horns in some of their uh, previous albums, too. So that seemed in line with them. Um I agree. It's kind of a song that's just them talking about how they're connected to life and nature. And um, this song uh, is very similar to some of their other songs of previous albums that, you know, you know, Ocean Breathes Salty. I mean, you've got a, a ton, most of their content, they talk about, you know, the earth, the moon, the planet. I mean, the moon in Antarctica is one of their albums. So they're very nature connected band so hippie. to hear them talking about these things it's the hippies man not surprising yeah no i <laughs> i agree so but yeah i mean i thought it was a an appreciative song you know we're lucky to be between the stars and seas and we should kind of appreciate our life among them it's a more positive song um compared to some of their other songs you know decade or two ago where they were kind of more more somber so um, yeah, I agree. It's not a, a standout song from the album for me. It's it's a it's a good song, but um, not one of the the ones that ranked higher for me. Fair shout out to MX for hosting us. Thank you, and everyone that hosts us so far. Um, yeah, no, I agree completely. It, it, it's it could have been it could have been better. It had decent moments to it, like like what you had hinted, but it's an interlude. It's yep. fine. Go ahead. All right. So next we've got uh, Walking and Running. Um, so this one I said it kind of starts off with a, you know, a, with some clapping and a funky bass line and some kind of technical guitar sounds. He kind of shows off his vocal range on this one um, compared to some of the other songs. Um, lyrically, I, I enjoyed this song. So there, uh, there are some thoughts that should never form to words inside our throats. Um, was kind of their main... Um, chorus throughout the song so when you were saying like a perfect example of a modest mouse song earlier i have this down as one that would be a perfect example of a modest mouse song um so it kind of shows off their range of talents and everything so lyrics um describing the constant noise around us and that we participate in um and kind of showing off that vocal range as i said also showing off you know a bunch of different elements with their music um even some kind of EDM sounds in the middle with a you know driving guitar that was added in and um, and more of the speedy vocals that you don't hear on any of the rest of the tracks um, from the album except for maybe one or two um, and then you know uh, just the message of the chorus again just saying you know there are a lot of thoughts we have a lot of opinions on things but we don't always have to be so brash and share it and get it out into the world um, as often so. Um, so yeah, for me, uh, just with a mult, the uh, kind of additional layers of guitars that were added um, into this and kind of battling it out close to the end of the song, 
and then just for it to kind of stop with a halt right at the end of the song i just thought it was for me like one of their best songs off the album just because it has everything i look for on a modest mouse track i mean if you if you're saying this is the style that exemplifies them i might be more inclined to listen to more of their content um, because of my feelings on this one i uh, I enjoyed the funk and bass guitar rhythm on this one to start. Very upbeat and fun opening verse. Uh, it builds really well into the chorus. And then when the chorus comes in, you feel invested, you know, with this psychedelic trip that's happening. And uh, lyrically, it made me feel, like you had said, that they're speaking on too much drama in the world and we need to think before speaking or acting. Um, I mean, if that's not a life lesson in itself for so many of us, I don't know what is. Uh, <laughs> myself. Um... But overall, yeah, fine track, and I said it was a decent build and groove to it. So if this is if this is Modest Mouse, I'm intrigued to listen to more. I'm not saying I'm sold, but I'm intrigued. I'm not shutting it down and saying no. So this this was good. This was this was a good track. Uh, I don't know if it's one of my favorites. It's a standout though for sure. Yeah. Um, our next one, my turn, right? Yep. Our next one, track five, coming in at five minutes and 55 seconds. Uh, woof. Uh, Wooden Soldiers. So you might get this, you might not, but this, the music on this one made me think of Cage the Elephant. Hmm. Is it just me, or do you see where I'm getting at? I do. Okay. Uh, slow funk, indie sound with a fusion of kind of hints of folk on this one. They had small hints on some of the stuff on this album. Very subtle. Uh, lyrically speaking on just kind of existing, but not really being real. An uh, example of that was hashtag and photo bragging. No one's even sort of real. No one, uh, no wonder no one feels better than before. So a lot of us that are hooked on, you know, this even as example, we're doing a show on social media, right? Uh, our, our obsessions, our addictions, our, what we're trying to do here with our clout, like, are we even ourselves? Are we even real? And like, what are we doing? And and honestly, that's to give a real world example of why I felt relating to that. A lot of the content now that we've geared on this channel that you're a part of is is somewhat selfish. We're doing things maybe not so much to appeal to others, but we're now doing things that appeals to us. You know, and we're not buying in or selling out ourselves on social media for that invisible clout that doesn't really matter. Uh, so for me, that's how I absorbed the lyrical content of this one and, and felt relating to it. Uh, so this was, for me, an important song. Um, but he speaks on not needing all of that and is content with someone just being there for him. So the simple things. And really, the lyrics are what saves the song because at 555, musically, it's okay. It's a long song. But lyrically mm -hmm. is what, to me, saved the song from being okay to being above okay for me. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Um, for, yeah, the song Wooden Soldiers, um, this is the uh, one of the only songs I can remember that has really added a little bit of female vocals. Um, so I don't know if you caught that through the chorus, through, through the song. I mean, I'm sure you did because it's just uh, unexpected. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, as far as lyrically, I totally agree with what you're saying. I, you know, even have the hashtag you know, hashtagging, photo bragging, no one's even sort of real. Um, that's kind of the, one of the, the things I enjoy most about Modest Mouse is they might not have the, the catchy hits or hit songs like float on, um, but lyrically they're just on another level for me as far as looking at some of these other bands that are trying to craft radio hits and not really talking about real things that people can relate to. Obviously, we had a little bit more of that with our last review with 21 Pilots. Mm -hmm. um, but also some of that was just kind of, you know, party or relax music. And um, meanwhile, Modest Mouse is kind of stuck with meaningful lyrics. So, yeah, this one, I, I agree. Um, it's a very long song, but it felt appropriately long considering the lyrical content. Um, even as you're saying, like, just being here starts off saying just being here is enough for me. And then just being here, being you is enough for me. Um, basically just saying, you know, I don't need you to be somebody. I don't need you to be 
hashtagging, photo bragging. You know, I don't need you to be this person that, you know, you're trying to be or that you're trying to get people to like you um, to be. But I just want you to be here with me. So I thought lyrically, yeah, this one was one of their top tracks on the album for me as well, because um, just, you know, just that. And then they had some commentary on kind of capitalism and social media um, and waste, uh, like talking about like trash can refrigerators, you know, things like basically, you know, how much we kind of waste in this society and just kind of going back to more of a simple way of living and just kind of being together. Yeah, like I can't emphasize that enough. Listen to this song for the lyrics. Um, shout out to chat real quick. Um, Ty says, I just checked our viewer list and out of curiosity, there's a viewer named Feet. So shout out to Feet. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Uh, Batman knows his brother Hands. This is cool. Um, Ty says, long song, five plus minutes. Trevor says, if someone wants to pay me, I'm willing to sell out our buy-in. So Trevor's, Trevor's all in. Uh, AEW sponsored the NOW podcast, which you can hear on Sundays, by the way. Another plug. Uh, on Sundays, Cody and Trevor doing the NOW podcast. If you like wrestling, check out their show. They do a fantastic job recapping the entire week. And lately, they've been doing extra things like retro pay-per-views, as well as most recently, they had everyone add and input their own top 10 wrestlers list. I only had enough time to come up with three. But check that out. Check out the live video version and you'll see what everyone said in chat. So again, check that out. That's on podcast platforms as well as archived on YouTube, youtube.com slash dose Continuing on, though, with our review here of Modest Mouse live here on Twitch with Staple Gun. It's this big hype right there. <laughs> uh, you got the next one or is it back to me? I don't remember. I'm all out of order. Oh, uh, let's see. So, yeah, you start off with Wooden Soldiers, so this one is me. Okay. Um, so, Transmitting Receiving is their next track. Um, so, this one, I mean, it's kind of like uh, very appropriately named. It's kind of a broken up, transmitting, receiving, like, signal type of vibe with uh, audio kind of breaking in and out. Kind of slow build with the guitars um, that sound off in the distance, kind of get closer, and uh, like a big bass drum kick. Um, it lists, uh, it's a list of worldly words, um, from crockpots to trolls, office dividers, clones, and macadamias, um, <laughs> with a million things in between. Um, <laughs> so, but then basically just, uh, the main part that was coming home was, you know, nothing in this world is going to petrify me. We are repeating, we are transmitting, we are receiving. Um, so kind of continue with some of the voice distortion, um, as some of the previous songs do. As far as what you were saying earlier for an interlude song, this felt more of like an interlude song. Um, just because it was a lot of random words scattered throughout the song with the main chorus repeating. Um, so it's not anything that stood out to me aside from the bizarre words they tried to fit into the song, um, which made it kind of interesting in that way um but not something that i would go back and listen to over and over again unless i'm trying to find words i didn't hear before no and we've spoken on the writing process more so heavily on what inspires and influences you during our 21 pilots uh album review of their latest work um scaled and icy go check that out um so Speaking on speaking on content that inspired, what in the world? I mean, other than everything, how do? You, I wish I was a fly on the wall, and not a uh, spider on the fly. Eh? Right. Uh, sorry, I had to reach for that one. Um, just transmitting and receiving here. Um, I'm, I'm done. Anyways. What what in like what was the creative process like in studio for this like I don't understand because this this is incredibly random yeah and I mean is that just simply what it is is it just random I mean I yeah I agree it's a lot of random words I think it's just basically saying whatever you throw at me whether it's clones or macadamias or whatever nothing's gonna really 
phase me or, or kind of repeating or going through the motions. Um, yeah, so, so I, I agree. It felt like they were just kind of like, hey, what's an interesting word we could put in here? Oh, macadamia, that's a fun word. You know, or office dividers. Like, who, who you know, who randomly thinks, oh, that'd be great in this track? I, I have no clue. So the brain works in mysterious ways. Everyone's programmed slightly different, too. Here, here's a bit of a short story. Um, for me, and, and I'm, there's a reason behind this story. For me, when I used to play music, I, I had to have a cooler on stage with me because I would tape my lyrics to the cooler. Because I could remember all my music. I, could rem I can remember random dates of things that happened in history from myself or worldly events. I can remember specifics of so many things. But for whatever reason, I can't remember lyrics. So my segue to that thought is, how does he remember this song live? I don't think he does. I think he ad-libs. Okay. Because, I mean, this is a new track. So I got to think when they're performing this live, there's no way you can memorize, number one, the order of those words. No. And <laughs> number two, just, uh, yeah, I, I imagine they're just going to... Or, fill it in with whatever random words come to their mind at the time. Or they play to the crowd with it, and they have a screen behind them with the words that come up. And Maybe. then he, he utilizes that as a crutch to remember right. it all. And then gets to then play it, with the crowd with it. And then if the teleprompter breaks, you just kind of dance off the stage. Exactly. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's never been done before on a Saturday night. Um, no. Ever. But yeah, <laughs> very indie rock, somewhat light folk influence on this one. Slow build, almost like a poem is what I described, because like it doesn't make sense uh, going into the first chorus. The thing I really admired, and, and this is uh, the industrial rock influence in me. It's very light, but the data distortion faint in the background I don't know if you were picking up on a lot of the uh, effects they were adding in studio, which you probably won't hear live unless they have a loop over their stuff right. live. Um, and then layers of vocals, too. With that, let me ask, because I meant to ask this earlier, um, how many people are in this band? What's the lineup consist of? Can't answer that for you. I know it's a band that's had a few lineup changes throughout the years. Not many, um, but I honestly can't say it. Okay. Dance, Grav, Dance? Isn't there a band, Dance, Gavin, Dance? There is? Yeah. I believe they're good, too. Do a jig, says Lana. We're going to do a jig. At no time, I'm not going to my room. And who says I'm not in my room right now? You don't know. It's a green screen. He might be in his room, too. You don't know. It's a map of the world. Behind right. <laughs> well, that's all Maybe I need. you want to be an explorer when I grow up. It's true. Stop judging people, Ty. It's not nice. Uh, so yeah, this song is definitely a trip. Uh, very 70s vibe to it. Psychedelic vibe again. Lyrically odd. We have already clearly emphasized that. Uh, I described it as incoherent rambling. Which, yeah. Fair. It's like one of those things, like, if you've ever attempted to write something and you're just filling time. Or if you, you'd had speech class in school, right? You didn't? Uh, yeah, middle school, right? Middle school or early high school, we yeah. so you had to fill a time, right? Your speech had to be on a topic, and you had to speak for so long. A lot of stuff was filler if you didn't have enough content. And it's it's is that what this is? <laughs> like you're just practicing something to make something up, and then you're like, you know what? This is funny. Let's do this. Uh, but yeah, the track overall did not do much for me, and it went on for far too long. Just like a review of this particular track has gone on. Yeah. Too long so maybe an interlude is also how i describe this one uh but thankfully it's still light out because the sun hasn't left i'm trying with these segues man i'm really trying i'm halo reaching yeah. i'll be here all night ladies and gentlemen thank you the sun hasn't left track seven coming in at 423 upbeat pop track which i fully assume if it isn't already will be a single at some point for the album uh, with the xylophone, I really got like a feeling of innocence and fun with this one. Lyrically, I get the feelings of creating interpersonal moments again and not being stuck on sites, calls, texts, uh, to be human with each other once again. And really, I said it was a fine track, and it, to me, it's definitely one of the standouts on the album. 
Yeah, I, I agree. Um, starts off with that, like you said, that kind of either marimba or xylophone sound, something, uh, you know, switches into more of like an electronic sound. And again, it's got some more audio distortion, which is kind of throughout this um, album, which which I liked. Um, and yeah, just kind of like a with a constant hi-hat kind of tapping going on. Um, for me, this one I felt was just kind of a, more of a, a inspirational track for people who kind of feel uh you know stuck in a bad spot you know there's still something left for you um basically saying the sun hasn't left there's still something left for you um you know even says you're not wrong things are a mess um literally just saying you know you know i may not know you but you know there's still something left for you you don't don't give up basically hold on um so yeah lyrically i really like this song um and one of the ones that stuck out for me too was uh, the world, um, the world is a womb. It ain't just a room. Um, so it's kind of a clever play on words, but also, you know, has deeper meaning than just it rhyming. Um, you know, it's it's not just a room. Like, please don't just leave the room. You know, we want you to develop, kind of get through. Um, so I really like the the horns in the background of this one as the song um, closes out, but. Yeah, it felt like a very like somber song, but also, you know, uplifting at the same time. So yeah, I, I agree. I think this is their third single from the album, the most recent one. It, it fits but, as um, a single for sure. But yeah, it definitely is a, a standout song for that album for me as well. Back so to up you, next, Bob. We've got uh, we've got lace your shoes up next. Um, for me, this was the most heartfelt song on the album. It's definitely uh, one of the slower songs, um, but also lyrically, for me, it's it's the best. Um, you know, basically it says things were hazy, but that all stopped with you. Um, kind of referring to uh, the lead singer having children. Um, you know, he, as I said um, before in their previous albums, they haven't been the most positive, upbeat songs, or they've been, you know, ex, you know, experimenting with drugs, or you know, kind of having a, um, depending on the album, you know, a less positive outlook on things. And now that he's got children in the world, he's seeing things totally differently. Um, so some other lyrics that stood out. Uh, it says, because the sunshine pours out of your mouth and eyes. Um, I can't see, no, I can't see nothing anymore. Meaning that his children's lives have given him a sense of purpose. Um, there's also some commentary on the uncertainty of the planet's future, saying, I still, I hope there's still something left for you as he's kind of staring out, uh, looking at things. Um, but I can't wait to watch and see what you do. Um, so the song closes out just as it begins. I can't wait to see you lace your shoes. Um, so lyrically, I haven't had a song like really affect me like this song in recent memory. Um, just looking at listening to the lyrics more more closely and talking about children and how they affect your lives, and it was just extremely relatable. Like no other modest mouth song has has ever been for me before. Because again, I'm not the the been more of the straight laced, not you know not the druggy taken you know kind of person. So. For me, I totally relate to the lyrics in this song, and it, it definitely set out as the best song on the album, even though it's something you would never hear on the radio because it's so slow. It's it's just very meaningful. Now, did you ever think you'd be at a point in your life where you'd be saying or thinking that? Oh, no. <laughs> How wild the world can change when you have someone or something that you're that responsible of or for that to me is wild in itself and so powerful mm -hmm. and that right there shows uh that you were a good at least a decent to good caretaker of the you know thing or someone you're responsible for and of um yeah i mean a lot of similar thoughts would I have thought these back in 04 listening to them if they wrote a song like this? No. No, no. way. 
Uh, the, the world is very different for me now than it was then, and it's clear it's, it is for them as well as you described it. Uh, and again, when you when you have the opportunity, if you do have the opportunity or want the opportunity, uh, having children, I mean, that changes everything. Um, it, it really does, it, at least your perspective and importance and value of so many things. Uh, but yes, the track slows back down again for this uh, one with the low vocal tones and heavier drum work with the toms. Lyrically, it feels like he's singing to his children and feeling inspired by seeing how they grow and, you know, what they become or what will they become. Basically, for me, I, I just it's like giving off a piece of yourself and being inspired by your offspring. Uh, grateful and hopeful for the future, so it's a lot of positivity in this one and hope. And, again, this is another one where the lyrics save a song because... Overall, it's it's not a standout musically, but lyrically, it truly is. Uh, it's yeah. another situation, though. It's far too long of a song to give this particular message out. Um, but it's one that I would not take off this album for any reason. It's a worthy addition. And again, the lyrics are what make it so important. Great. But we segue into a song with the title of Never, excuse me, never fuck a spider on the fly. I, I was so like, that the game sucks. Is that what that means? No, I just okay. <laughs> I <laughs> I was like, what does this even mean? I didn't even Google what it meant because I was just so awestruck by the title. No, I just meant with their first song, Fuck Your Acid Trip, and oh. then Never Fuck a Spider on the Fly. It's clear that they gave two fucks for this They album. did give two fucks, and there's not a lot of... I shouldn't have to explain this. my punch to you. You know, that <laughs> one missed me. That one, I, I'm at fault for that one. I should have gotten that one. Uh, I, I think I'm just so awestruck still by this title. Um, and I still don't understand it after listening and trying to dig through the lyrics either. Uh but very indie, rock heavy on this one, vocal distortion being used. The weird thing about it was the verses blend into the chorus and there's really not much variety to it. Uh, even if it, it's almost five minutes long and still structurally it's just kind of the same. Uh, only really building and it's only different in the bridge of the song. Which you would think is the chorus but it's not. And... There's a lot of metaphors. I say metaphor galore is how I described it. But I don't really know the theme. I, I couldn't. I don't know what is happening. I listened to this one a few times. And I'm like, am I missing something? Is it an inside joke? Is it like a phrase somebody uses somewhere else? Like we're Midwest and, you know, we say soda or pop and then we get mad at each other for saying one over the other. Like... I've never heard anyone say never fuck a spider on the fly. Me either. Where are they from? <laughs> I don't know, man. Good question. <laughs> Watch, they're from here. <laughs> we just don't. We're not cool. We're not, we're not hip with no. the lingo. Definitely not Michigan, I can tell you that. No. They're from in between, says Ty. They might be. But yeah, that's that's all I got for this track. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> that's fair. Um, yeah, so I mean, this one, as far as the sound of it, I, I like the sound, the distorted guitar, synth, um, some of the sounds that, you know, are kind of classic um, Modest Mouse that you'd hear in some of their older stuff. Um, but midway through it, it almost sounded like kind of a, an Australian, like, didgeridoo in, oh. the, in the middle. And I was I was trying to figure out for the longest time what that sound was because there there are so many tracks on this album where I wanted to comment on the sound and I'm like I don't even know how to describe that so I'm just gonna leave it alone. <laughs> so this was this was one of them until I could put together that it sounded like a, a dance redo. <laughs> um, yeah, so lyrically I I agree like never you know never fuck a spider on the fly I've never heard that before. Um, but I did find online basically some commentary from the band on this one. Oh, good. Um, good. <laughs> which gave me some more insight, which was helpful because uh, otherwise, 
it is a little odd to comment on if you don't really understand it. But basically, it's saying to quit trolling people or you know attacking people online. Kind of what they're saying before. Um, you may just kind of get caught in a web and it can come back to you. So basically, don't just be careful of what you're doing or. You know, it has kind of like even hints of like internet stalking and invasion of privacy. And basically, uh, you know, there's a web all around you. If, you know, you make the wrong move, you're going to get caught. Clever. Um, okay. And so, yeah. So once I heard that, I could appreciate the song a little more. Um, but yeah, I agree. It's uh, sound wise. I like some of the, the music in this. Um, but lyrically, if, if you're getting that complex... Hey, I can see how it would lose you and, and lose me as well. Um, but yeah, overall, I thought it was a, a good track, but um, not a standout for me. Uh, Ty says they are from, how do you say that? Issaquah? Issaquah? Washington, based in Portland. Hmm. So they're, they're West Coast, Northwest. I mean, I, that makes sense because aren't Cold War kids from around that area too? Aren't they a Seattle band? I think so. So very, very indie rock prevalent in that area. I mean, it's always rainy and kind of depressing out there anyway. So what's left other than psychedelic drugs and indie rock? Yep. Who, who knows? Um, what a while. I might go back and listen to it again knowing... You know, that's the meaning. I might gain a little bit more appreciation, but man, what a weird way to write a song. A clever, I guess. At least you know not many people are going to use that, you know, analogy of or metaphor of things. Uh, Ty says, a place where it rains a lot sounds like your natural habitat. I do like rain, don't get me wrong, but sun is nice every once in a while. Um, What are we on, 10? Is it me? Is it you? Uh, it, it is me for this one. Oh, um, so this one is uh, Leave a Light On. So starts off with, again, with sounds that I can't even uh, place or explain other than I would say it would be a soundtrack to a drug trip. Um, <laughs> and uh, basically, uh, lyrically, it says, you know, I know a guy, uh, he claims he's from a different planet. Um, and during that lyric, they kind of added a, a spacey kind of uh, effect to it, which I thought was kind of a cool touch to that lyric. Um, sounds kind of like, a, for me, I said it, it sounds kind of like a rough cut from a Black Keys album mm. with some of the keyboard effects. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the feel that I was getting from it. Um, and this was actually released a month before the album dropped. Um, so this was one of the, the first ones that came out. And... Um, and it, it kind of reminds me of like Beck, um, kind of like a, a you know the '90s Beck type of song too. Um, vocally, I, I thought the song was underwhelming for me, um, just because it doesn't show a lot of range. It, there's not a lot of emotion in his singing, um, and lyrically, it's just kind of stale. Aside from um, a line that I just found funny and clever it was just you know my friend's house is full of very very helpful nurses some days they have birthdays and some days they have hearses um so again it's just more funny interesting content and overall i mean basically a message saying you know leave the light on for you i'll be a good friend it's kind of a welcoming kind of song but um i thought it was kind of a an odd place for them to start with a single from this album yeah, I didn't know this was a single. Um, that's that's, but again, this whole album has been like, what songs would you choose? Yeah. Right. So, the, at four minutes eighteen seconds, though, I, I feel that's a wild one too, because generally a single is three three thirty, right? You know, that's the yep. the sweet spot for a radio hit, and I emphasize radio hit. Uh, obviously, the radio trims things, and they'll like lead into a song already and I'll, especially if a song has like a long instrumental intro they'll start it right around like the first verse or something to to trim because they have other things they need to get to um but yes this song really for me it made me think of middle era beatles so around the time of like sergeant pepper and then post sergeant pepper so when they had their experimentation phase so when they were kind of getting out of the the brit pop you know, rock of, of what they 
became established for um, and then ushered in the, the, the ending styling, if you will, of the Beatles. Um, so yeah, almost, and it's, it's just hints of it. There's even like hints where I'm like, that right there is very Beatles. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't describe it past that or, you know, detail it better. What I would have loved for this track is some experimentation. This was a track that could have been complemented with more experimentation, different instruments, different things that they could have added more depth to it and a bigger sound. Um, I did note here, actually, I'd forgotten. So I have notes. This is the second single, and I described it as giving a great example of the album itself as being a single. But again, with my thoughts heading into this for my notes, um, I'm surprised it's a single. But again, a great example for what the album is, but not what you'd expect on the radio. Um, But then again, if you enjoy this, you're going to enjoy the album, to be honest with you. If you like this Mm -hmm. particular track, you're going to like the album overall. And really, for me, lyrically, I'm not, I wasn't really certain. I'm glad you described it. I wasn't really certain what was being described uh, lyrically for me. At least I wasn't finding, you know, anything of, of the deeper context that you had described there. And it could have been a, a point of fatigue too, listening to an almost hour long album. Um, th- you know, I don't know. Don't you shy away. Don't you shy away. Thank you for the alert. Dot. That's right. Uh, speaking of Don't You Shy Away, check that out. We did review that song and the entire album by 21 Pilots. Check it out now. Let us know what you think. But yes, leave a light on. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I agree. Uh, still me? Yep. Okay. Track 11. We're almost done, ladies and gentlemen. Track 11 coming in at 305, Japanese Trees. This is the one that I said earlier on in the show where I said, I'll bring this up again, pop or a punk rock influence. This is the track that really has that uh, example of being uh, punk rock aggression with this indie track. It had a little bit more drive, a little bit more aggressive vocals, a little bit more aggression on the beats. Not punk when you consider like uh, Ramones or Rancid punk, but we're talking about like post, you know, like the the little bit more uh, aggressive indie. Uh, Black Keys was a great example you brought up a little ago. They have a little bit more bigger sound. Cold War Kids, they they get into a little bit more heavier, you know, punk styling. This track compared to the other ones had that. Uh, the verse drives the song, builds into a slowed down chorus, almost like a halftime feel in the chorus, kind of breaking it apart. Lyrically, I felt the song was about escaping things, and uh, I felt it was an overall good track. Definitely, for me, another standout on the album. Yeah, no, I I agree. Um, It starts off with some great guitars, more of that that punk sound, like you're saying. One of the faster songs on the album. Um, And then as soon as it hits the chorus, it transitions right back into that psychedelic rock, where it kind of cuts out the guitars, goes back into more synth stuff um but yeah another good song this one is not really you know avoid the internet drama or don't be a bully it's just kind of like saying hey take a minute to disconnect kind of you know go on a journey go disconnect and to see what it's like out in the world you know they talk about ditching their cell phones at a rest stop and just going out and, and being together so yeah i thought it was a good um balance of their of kind of multiple genres mixed into one really good song so yeah i agree this is another standout um from the album for me just because of how well they balance that punk and that psychedelic in this song because psychedelic rock is something i've never been into but i feel like with their lyrical content and mixing it in with this more you know post-punk feel i feel like it works really well yeah, and I mean, this is such a interesting common topic as far as awareness now, and I'm thankful it's become more prevalent and more people are aware of how important mental health is. And I mean, they speak on it here, as you mentioned. It is it is incredibly important to disconnect, uh, especially for younger generations than us. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, we had the privilege of growing up with minimal internet usage. You had to use dial-up up until you know our late teens so like it wasn't just like 
pull out your PDA or your smartphone or your tablet and just be on the internet and connected with everybody. Um, we got to escape it and just be with friends without devices. And even video games as a kid, like Super Nintendo or Sega, like those games are 20 minutes long. They're not hours and hours of investment now that you can get sucked into in this whole world of things. Um, I had seen Rob Zombie a couple of years back, and he is notorious for yelling at the crowd to put down their damn cell phones and live in the moment. Stop recording everything that you do as we're recording this podcast right now. Uh, but, but in reality, stop recording everything that you do and live in the moment. Make those memories for you and be there. Live that. And it's like, man, we give that older generation a lot of shit because they don't understand other generations. But I think we've lost some values that they had because of technology and how we've adapted to this instantaneous expectation lifestyle and the immediate gratification and need for things. And... uh, it's damaging, and all this relates and boils down to mental health awareness and importance. Uh, I'm not going to stand on a soapbox here uh, and, and be on that, but I just want people to be more conscious and aware of these things. And it's it's so incredibly, I guess, uplifting or, or nice to hear this in music, and because and, I feel inspired by music. I, I, we've said this before. And I'll say it again a million times. Music has saved my life in more ways than one. And it's why it means so much to me. So to have that message and stuff and hope it connects with even just one person, you've made a difference in someone's life. And I hope they feel fulfilled because they've done a good deed in that regard. So I'll remove myself from the soapbox now. (laughs) (laughs) No, I, I mean, I agree. But like you said, um, it's about a song about kind of disconnecting, getting back to things. Um, you know, when you were talking, I was just thinking about even when, you know, college days, like I still had a flip phone at that time. You know, I wasn't, you know, we were just in the moment. We weren't, you know, there weren't people sitting on the sides being on their phones because, you know, they, they didn't have, you know, any access to that. So, um, yeah, I feel like we've kind of lost that in, in a lot of ways. Um, so yeah, I agree. Uh, really good song uh, from that one. Question real quick from chat. Ty says, we have one more song to go, but maybe you can answer this question now or you can wait for your final okay. thoughts. Um, Ty asks, if you guys could recommend one song from the whole album, which would it be? All right, what's yours? Oh, God, put me on the spot first. All right, uh, I'll go. Go ahead, because I will say the the sun hasn't left. Okay, that's what um, I was going to pick too. So <laughs> <laughs> I would say lace your shoes lyrically. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you've got kids, lace your shoes a hundred percent. But as far as uh, a good introduction to um, what they bring, uh, I would say the sun hasn't left with walking and running in, in a very close second. I would also add we are between just because it's an easily accessible single. You're going to probably hear that on the radio. Um, plus, it's a good introduction, again, to the band itself as well. Um, but, yeah. And Lana says, me currently, kids get off my lawn. Apparently, I'm an old man now. Jeez. Thanks for that. Right. Thanks for that. Um, what's so, up? What's up, Cody Hosting? Hey, thank you for that. Uh, track 12 is back to you? Yeah. It's back to the middle. Back, back. Uh, he's doing it now. See, he's doing it. You would get him to do it anyway. Um, well, it's funny when you were talking earlier, I was thinking, Oh, it's like we should disconnect from the world at large, but no. Um, but if you are not familiar with their albums, then you don't even know that reference. Nope. Um, so, <laughs> uh, back to the middle, uh, is their last track. Uh, I said heavy guitars, um, throughout that really make this a strong closing track for a rather um, subdued album overall. Um, it kind of talks about some of the themes they've talked about throughout the album. Um, our head is a cage and the parrot, it won't shut up. Um, basically, just we're all kind of struggling, you know, fighting with ourselves, trying to cut out the noise. Um, great references to that, uh, to the feeling of kind of riding high and being on top of the world where you feel like things are great. 
and just kind of knowing that inev inevitability of you're going to get kicked down a peg or two, you're going to get right back to the middle. Um, and that's kind of what the, the song represents, back to the middle. Um, it's a great way to, to close the song or to close the album, like I said, um, just kind of wants society as a whole um, to get back to the middle instead of taking such extreme views. Um, when I read some of the commentary from uh, on this one, I, I again was interpreting it just as I said up until that last line. Um, then I saw that they're um, what inspired this one was some of the uh, like extreme views and things that um, the lead singer's mom had taken um, from politics and things. So again, Modest Mouse isn't a political band really at all. If you listen to this whole album, you're not going to really find anything in there. It's just kind of talking about the world right now as far as what's going on online, social media, you know, us destroying the planet, us wasting things. Um, but they don't really take political stances, um, which is which is good for a band like this. Um, they're not trying to win over or lose fans with that kind of messaging. Um, so, yeah, and this one was actually inspired... <laughs> by his his mom it had kind of gone more extreme on one side didn't really say which way or the other but um just wants kind of people to take a step back and kind of get back to the middle and you know quit riding high and thinking you're right about everything and just kind of be open to more you know be more open to listening to things and just having conversations with people again and and that's just it a conversation is a two-way thing you can't talk in a conversation otherwise you're just talking to yourself so, yeah, another important message for our soapboxes here tonight. Um, but, I mean, these are valid things. Um, so for me, I felt it was a calmer closing vibe as well, with the song being driven by guitar rhythms. A looping verse that builds into a heavier chorus with distortion on guitar and heavier drums. Calm vocals bring us back into the verses. Basically, the chorus is just instrumental. There's no actual chorus to the song. Uh, lyrically, I got the impression again about being stuck in our own heads uh, to add to everything that you had said. Song builds back again to have her instrumental chorus, drops back down into vocals, and basically coasts out to the, the end of the album. So uh, I felt it was fine. Again, important message, a lot of that here. I, I, I joke, but like a lot of hippie mentality on this. So it's, you know, possibly their, their influence or inspiration. Um, who knows, but they, they definitely, they're not, they're consistent. I will say they're yeah. consistent, at least on this album, from my knowledge of them as a band, they're consistent. And I don't know if it's an intentional theme or not, or if it's just them being them. Cause again, I don't know their complete discography, but they're consistent. So if you, if you like this or have liked tracks off this, you're going to like this album. That's not my final review yet, but that's my closing thought on that track and what I felt. With that, we do have our final thoughts. Would All you right. like to uh, go or would you like me? Final thoughts with the score? Final thoughts with or... the score. Let's review and recap. You predicted a six for me. I had yep. predicted, I went with eight. I was leaning seven, but I went with eight. For you. Okay. Uh, Ty asks, what is my shirt? Um, do you know what it is? No? Let's see who can guess it. First person to guess gets a thousand strands. Tetris. Nope. Ty says, I thought it was Minecraft. Nope. I'll reveal at the end. We'll come back to this. Oh, yes. All right. Final thoughts. So for me, I said uh, for their first album in six years, um, this is what I would expect to hear from a band that has been remarkably consistent in keeping with their indie slash punk slash rock um, with bizarre vocals and meaningful lyrics. Um, my only complaint uh, would be the lack of kind of radio friendly singles. Um, but from a band that's never really tried to be a big hit maker and be played on the radio a ton. I mean, obviously, Float On was kind of a uh, you know happy accident. They 
Um, he kind of wrote it in reaction to a song that he heard and, you know, it's kind of lightning in a bottle. That's what helped gain them a ton of fans and it's, I'm sure, helped make them last this entire time. Um, but it's not something that I've come to expect from this band. Um, but I think a strong case can be made for The Sun Hasn't Left um, and also uh, Japanese Trees, I think, could also be another one that could easily be played on the radio. That would be um, that would be great. Uh, from this album. Um, I enjoyed the new lyrical takes on some of their older subjects, uh, new perspectives with their kind of natural evolution through life to make some of their content more relatable for their non-drug using and aging fans. Um, <laughs> and even with their drug using uh, content in this album, they kind of make more of a joke of it, like, you know, fuck your acid trip at the very beginning. Um, so for that reason, uh, I gave it an eight out of 10. Hey, nailed it. Look at that. It's my celebration. Don't be jealous. Man. <laughs> you should be. So final thoughts. This was the most difficult album to review so far. Not that I've never reviewed an album before. Not that I've went in with apprehension to albums. But really because I didn't know what to expect and I'm not familiar, as I've emphasized so much during this conversation tonight, um, not familiar. So it was just, I wish I had known more or listened to stuff other than Float On and maybe a couple of handful of things from that era. And that's it. I don't know why I fell out. I just didn't continue to listen to that genre. So to me, I was excited. I was scared to do this. And that's a cool feeling. So like, I'm thankful that you picked it. I'm even more thankful for what's coming up next month. Uh, for those that don't know, one of our lucky top five donators is going to pick our next album for us coming at the end of the month in July. Um, what are they going to pick? Who knows? We would love something from this year, from 2021, if at all possible. Ideal. That would be ideal. Um, but we'll, we'll talk with the winner and we'll let you guys know in proper advance so you can listen to it. And we can also listen to that album and give our, you know, in-depth feedback that we've given here. Continuing on, really only knowing that single and stuff that was earlier and uh, knowing them from Guitar Hero or Rock Band, because that was a song you played in those games. Uh, it was also a hip-hop they remixed. Who did that? Was it Lil Wayne? Who, who remixed Float On? Somebody sampled oh, it. I have no idea. It was late 2000s. Can't, can't remember. Somebody sampled it, though. Um, so really, you filled in the blanks that I did not have as far as an in-depth history or knowledge of their work, and I could not make any comparisons to the prior sound or growth as an act. I preface with that, and I want to give conclusion with that. I am only familiar in this much depth and detail with this album solely and only. So reviewing this album in a vacuum... I would have to say that they definitely have a style and sound that they wanted to go for and they went for on this album because they hit it. They were consistent as mentioned. It's a sound that you either enjoy or you just probably don't. I think it's a hit or miss for people. Normally for me, this would not be a... Thanks for the host, Thunder. Normally for me, this would not be a genre I seek out or really enjoy, to be honest with you. I can say that, though, this was an album... I did enjoy. It was not my favorite. I'm not going to probably add it to a playlist of things, but there are some standouts. To truly describe this album, though, I would be making comparisons I had to bands like Cage the Elephant, uh, Hits by Queens of the Stone Age, as well as Amberlin, The Beatles, you'd mentioned um, Cold War Kids, as well as uh, Black Keys. Yeah. While those are bands that I do tend to enjoy more, than Modest Mouse of this album in particular. Um, Modest Mouse has a style of their own on this album. And it is not one that I would, again, listen to over and over. I can't, I, I'm not saying it's bad. But it's not my favorite. The, the highs that are showcased are in the singles from this album mostly. Other than the lyrically noted ones that we talked about. With the more upbeat and want to groove and or sing along tracks. That was lacking, as you mentioned as well. Lack of singles, lack of 
the radio friendly stuff, the replayability. That's not diminishing things because pop can be disposable too. We know that it is very much a disposable genre. The lows are pretty much everything in between with so many tracks feeling like an interlude with the average generic style. I would have probably enjoyed this more, you know, if they had the the upbeat stuff. Like I, I can't say uh, that enough. So for me, you got it right. I gave it a six out of ten, and it's <laughs> you did it. <laughs> Do the big bang. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I can't say like it's just not my favorite. Like mm-hmm. I don't want to take a crap on this album because it doesn't deserve that. It's not bad. Mm -hmm. This is not my style of music, and I'll admit that. And that's okay. What I am thankful for is that I listened to it, I appreciated the things that I did, and I think I'll get a few tracks out of this album that I will listen to again. And that, to me, is a plus. Because had we not done this, you or I might not have listened to it in detail that we did here. Mm -hmm. So soon we did. You probably more so than I. I probably, again, would have never listened to this album. Never. Mm -hmm. I would have known it existed because I was like, hey, I remember that band. But that's it. So I'm thankful for that. I'm glad we did this because we're getting something. Listeners, hopefully they're getting something out. Hopefully we inspired somebody to be a a, fan of this and they listen to their catalog. Really, that's what this is about. Breaking something out, introducing stuff, sharing our passions. And really, who knows what this next album that we're going to have to review is going to be? Who knows? Right. We could have a complete troll, and we could do some twangy country. Could be. We could do EDM. We could do ska. Like, who knows? I'm opera. Never, we could do opera. It's... <laughs> oh... The fact that we're opening this up to listeners is scary. We should stop encouraging these ideas. But what fun <laughs> is that? <laughs> Ty was guessing a 7 to 10. He said, oof, I was close. You can't guess a range. <laughs> <laughs> Garth Brooks. Uh, Lana would be subbing in on that one if it's Garth Brooks. I might have to stand that one out. SpongeBob album. Is that really an album? Britney Spears or Taylor Swift? I would be down for both of those, to be honest with you. I would do Britney Spears or Taylor Swift. Review the album, that is. I should work on describing things better. Yeah. Whatever they want to throw at us. Let's give it a shot. Obviously, this is totally new for you, especially if you if you haven't even listened to um, you know, good news for people who love bad news from 2004 when that had flowed on on it then clearly you just never looked into their more than their radio singles or single um so yeah this was a i'm sure a brand new experience for you so um i guess you know as far as what you're missing from those previous albums it's just more uh um uh, again more great lyrical content like you've got in this album um kind of more upbeat in some of those albums um and then um, just uh, more kind of range on the vocals. So that would be what it, what's kind of lacking from this one as far as you you get more bizarre, uh, passionate vocals. And he's got a weird voice, very polarizing. So either you're going to love his vocals or you're going to hate him. You might fall somewhere in between on a few tracks. But, um, yeah, it's a very polarizing band. So... I, I thought the lyrical content might come through enough to to boost your rating up to a six, considering I knew this wouldn't be your, your cup of tea. And I truly, that's what I think did it. That saved it. So, um, and, and that stuff before wouldn't have meant as much as it does. And the importance of that, too. Like, it, it's definitely important that we, we talk about we can't neglect a piece of the music, which is the lyrics. It is a valuable piece of of content in it so um yeah if you remove that though <laughs> i don't know it'd probably uh be a four so oh i i get it and um so funny unrelated story i was went to taco bell earlier today 
driving through and there's some 17, 18 year old kids in the parking lot listening to apple bottom jeans. And <laughs> I'm just thinking, I can't imagine any of those kids listening to this album and going, Oh yeah. Like I, I really like this album. Boots because with the fur. Ly- lyrically, you're you're not looking for lyrics. You're looking for beats. <laughs> you're looking for hooks. You're looking yeah. for something to be catchy that you can dance to or whatever. So it was just it was just really weird because I'm sitting here lo- playing the track in my car, driving by and seeing them, you know, listen to that. It just really threw me off. But um, yeah, I don't think this is something that 17 or 18 year olds are gonna go. And, yeah, this is my jam. Out of the stuff, this is just a random thought. Uh, th- this happens. Um, out of the stuff we listened to growing up, what would be the worst artist or album that we were forced to review? And this is opening up trolls, by the way, who are listening right now to get an advantage to throw something at us. But what would be the worst thing that you would have to to review in a, a setting like this where we'd have to give honest breakdowns and opinions of everything? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty open to a lot of genres now, more so than I used to be. So uh, the only thing that I think would be the most difficult for me is, is country. Yeah. Just, I, but even that, like some kind of like Americana folk kind of, you know, I can appreciate songs that have great lyrics that might not be my musical style. But for the most part, I don't find that. What about there. what about viewers chat right now? What do you guys? Well, I give my answer to that. What do you guys think would be the worst one for you to review? Um, for me, in all honesty, like this was a guilty pleasure growing up, and I still kind of like bring it up in a playlist every now and then. Just nostalgia. Uh, the band would be Limp Biscuit. <laughs> oh. Reviewing them and then deciphering their lyrical content alone. Um, yeah, that makes me think of Crazy Town. Oh God, that would be another <laughs> one too. That would be rough. Yeah, uh, that I listened to that album so much when I was younger, and now like I tried going back and listening to it, and I go, what "Did I? What did I hear in this?" You're my butterfly, <laughs> baby, baby. <laughs> so bad, so yeah. bad. And it wasn't his name like Shifty Shellshock. Didn't he have like a weird nickname like that? I have no idea. <laughs> he had the star tattoos on his shoulders because that was like a West Coast thing that was super popular. If you always had like a tank top or no shirt on, super, super cool. Oh, yeah, he loved himself, that's for sure. Oh, dude, he was so into himself. I think half that band is uh, no longer with us. Huh? So, yeah. Review anime soundtracks? That'd be interesting. I'd be, like I said, we're down to try, you know, we're DTA. No? Down to try anything? <laughs> anyway, I should only speak for myself going forward. Um, we didn't have anybody respond in chat other than I love all music genres. We're not DTF, Ty. Good lord. I know. Downtown Friday? Protection. Downtown Friday. <laughs> what is happening? This is where the show derails. This is why no Batman says no. See, see what happens. This is when we go off script. We have a script for a reason. This is what happens when we go off script. Shenanigans, which that's an album by Green Day. Yeah, that's why you never fuck a spider on the fly. (laughs) (laughs) Got what we're doing here. It's true. (laughs) It's true. (laughs) But yes, coming soon. We don't know yet because tomorrow is the end of month. Tomorrow is NAW Pride. Join us 8 p.m. for that if you're participating. Uh, if you're not booked, maybe there'll be a dark match for you. Talk to me. We'll figure something out. Uh, if you are booked, obviously be there to support NAW Pride because we support Pride here on DNA. And we'll also find out who our top five is at the end of the show tomorrow. The top five are going to get five prizes, one for each ranking, by the way. First come, our first ranking, first pick. So if you get first, you get first dibs. And uh, you're going to get to choose from one of five prizes. Those prizes include book the next pay-per-view at the end of July. So that's one. Pick a community night game for all of us to get together and play. That's their second prize. Again, no specific order. You get first dibs. 
Uh, third one is pick a retro pay-per-view or theme for the Nerds of Wrestling podcast. So for Cody and Trevor to talk about whether it's like a top 10 something or pick a retro pay-per-view that you want them to review. And if you're interested, you can be involved in that episode if you want to partake and be a guest on the podcast. Again, no pressure. You don't have to be, but if you want to be. Another prize is you get to pick the video game movie for the RDNA podcast. So pick one that we haven't reviewed yet, like uh, Rampage or Doom or Tomb Raider, anything that we haven't done yet. It has to be a video game movie, though. can be any video game movie, live action, animated. No series at this time, because that would be... I know there's been a demand for Castlevania. That'll be a special episode down the road. But let's keep it in movies to start. And then prize five is what we do here. Pick an album. Ideally from 2021, we want music that we don't have maybe a jaded you know, opinion on or already preconceived. We want to kind of go in blind. If you really, really, really want to be my lover. Uh, if you really, really want us to... Uh, zig zig Ah. If you really want us to do an old album, I'm going to finish this thought, damn it. If you want us to review... No, you won't. <laughs> if you want us to review something really, really bad, let us know. And look at the... You're so, like... He's so focused right now. He's like, what are you saying? What are you doing? I didn't agree. We didn't talk about this. Um, Nicki Minaj... I wouldn't be opposed to that. So there's not a lot of that. I'll be honest, I can't be opposed to anything, but you might not get the result you want. <laughs> what I'm saying, too. You're going to get honesty yeah. from us. So if you're trying to troll us or throw something terrible at us, we're going we're to rip it apart if it's bad. Or we're going to praise it if it's good. We're going to be honest about it. We're going to take the time and care as we've done with all these so far. We just want to throw it out to you guys and see what you want and uh, give control on this channel You know, for now. To you guys, is it going to be that way forever? Who knows? We might take it back and say, nope. nope. Well, and it's, it's easy to have nostalgia about something from before. So, yes. or to hate it or remind you of so-and-so, you know, like, so yes. try to keep it current because, you know, if it is something that you have specific memories of, you might score, you know, an album extremely high because whatever event happened around that time. So... Yeah, I think something current. Whatever whatever you want to throw at us, let's give it a shot. And that's the power of music. You're forever reminded by good or bad, depending on when that came out. Because you'll instantly remember, or instantly be brought back, you know, to those moments. Uh, it's really the same with a lot of media. And that's why media review in general is fun, because nostalgia is fun, for one thing. But uh, there, there's so much power in memories and influence in, in media in general. Uh, which again is a driving force of why we're doing these. So, but that concludes roast Nikki, Nikki Minaj. I would uh, that would be fun. We'll just have the music video on loop behind us. It'd be a good thing. We get copyrighted, but hey, who cares? Um, but that concludes Modest Mouse, the Golden Casket. We're gonna bury that one. Yeah, I tried. I want to thank Staple Gun, a.k.a. Justin here, for joining us again. Glad to have you as my co-host on this music. None better than to talk music. Again, we have years and years experience discussing music together. I'm not saying we're good at it, but we have years. We try. <laughs> yeah. We have years of discussing music and being a fan of music. So glad to have him. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's been fun. It'll continue to be fun. I'm looking forward to the next one. Um, but, yes, join us for NAW Wednesday and Thursday this week. Pride tomorrow night. Regular show Thursday. Uh, it is the 4th of July for us here in the States this upcoming weekend. So it is a holiday weekend, meaning that some of us might be not around, uh, myself included. I generally go camping over the 4th, so I will not be attached to many electronics with stable Internet connection. I'll still have my Nintendo Switch, though. So, like, don't leave home without that. Um, but besides that, we may be having next Tuesday an extended version of the Dosage podcast. I've been in discussion with Cody King here, who has been in chat with us. We have outlined 
the year 2003 in video gaming, 2004, 2005, 2006, and 2007. I don't know if we'll get through all those years, and we'll do them in segments. That way we can break them apart in individual episodes for your listening so you don't have a six-hour episode to listen to in one chunk. We'll cut them up into pieces and upload them individually. But we have that stuff mostly prepared and ready for next Tuesday. The reason being, I have Tuesday off for whatever reason. Uh, I'm not complaining. The 6th of July I'll take off. I guess they're just honoring the 5th and 6th for us. Wow. So. Not too shabby. No, I'll take it. So be on the lookout. I was like, well, what am I going to do with my day? I could rest. But why rest when you could make content and talk with friends? Seems simple. We were going to do an episode that night anyways. Might as well knock it out during the day. So if you want to join us for that, we'll put the official schedule up online in the coming days as we finalize that thought. And then with that being said, and the 4th of July, this Sunday night, I don't know if they're bumping the NOW podcast to Monday. I fully assume. Cody can confirm in chat here if you want. Um, I can't imagine them not watching fireworks or whatever they're doing on the 4th. And doing a podcast instead. I mean, if you are, by all means, I fully assume that it'll be on Monday, the 5th, for you guys. Other than that, turn on alerts, subscribe to us on social media. That's the best way to stay in touch and in contact with us. Join our Discord. We're on Discord. Stay in the conversation. Stay in the know. Again, one of the best ways. Just find us. We're on the socials. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, YouTube, Twitch. You name it. You can find us. But again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Justin. Be thank on the you. lookout for him in the highlight reels on Halo 5. This man's a pro. Someone's got to carry you. It's true. He's generally been better than me. That's why we play together. Somebody's got to carry me. Yeah. <laughs> Cody says we might just skip. So there you go. Who knows? Be on the lookout, though. Social media is the best way to stay updated, stay in touch. Other than that, thank you all for listening. Oh, Tice has got to carry us without rated. <laughs> thank you all for listening. It's always a pleasure. And until next time, take care, everybody. Good night.